Are you confused about the different types of Power Apps, comparing Canvas to model-driven apps? Well then this video is for you. My name is Dougie Wood and I'm a Solution Architect here at Valto. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about what are Canvas apps, what are model-driven apps, and providing you examples along the way. Also, stick around to the end in which I'm going to tell you about a third type of Power App that you might not yet have heard of. If you need any support or consultancy with Power Apps, you can always reach us by going to valto.co.uk forward slash YouTube to contact us via a contact form. But let's jump in and start talking about Power Apps. So the first type of Power App that we're going to be talking about is Canvas Power Apps. So Canvas Power Apps, to be honest, when everyone mentions Power Apps, usually I tend to find 90% of the time what they're talking about is Canvas Power Apps. Although there's three different types of Power Apps, Canvas Apps seem to be the most commonly used and referred to when we use the term Power Apps. The purpose of a Canvas Power App is to digitally transform business processes using low code. So, if, for example, that, that screenshot we can see here, all of this has been technically built from a blank canvas, hence why it gets its name. It allows you to build apps with a kind of drag-and-drop approach. Now, the benefits of a Canvas Power App is that you can literally design it to be almost however you want. A lot of Canvas apps do look very similar, and that's because people tend to just use the kind of native um, functionality of the page without actually trying to customize it to make it look and feel um, a little bit more aesthetic or more towards their brand. Um, essentially, in the Power Platform, the Canvas app is the visual element designer. So this is what you can build to make it look however you, uh, however you like. Um, it provides a simplistic environment to create what you need. And what I mean by that is, it is all quite drag and drop, the interface. Um, for example, on here, we've got these different types. This would be like a gallery uh, control uh, of buttons. We've got these date calendar picker fields. Uh, we've got text input, and then we've got buttons to submit things. Now, this is all running on what we call low code, which is essentially formula-driven um, programming. So imagine like with Excel, where you can create sums and counts and you can add things together using very similar uh, kind of functionality to what you can do with Canvas Power Apps. It's all driven on these formulas. So although you can build very powerful applications using this, you don't need to be a programmer. You don't need to know code and things like that. You can learn a little bit. And in fact, actually a lot of kind of basic Canvas apps, you barely need to learn any form of um low code formulas at all a lot of it is just quite straightforward um drag and drop type of building so i just wanted to jump in and show you a little example of a canvas power app that we've built here at valto and we also resell it to our customers because everybody needs a leave request system inside of their organization now this is really simple um in terms of its functionality it's easy to use um, but it's all built using Canvas Power Apps. There's no kind of pro code running here. It's all just using Canvas Power Apps. It's quite a simplistic thing. We can create new requests. We can pick from categories, which is actually pulling from a SharePoint list of categories. Um, depending on which category you choose, it will show and hide. Say, for example, with holidays, we have an entitlement, whereas with sickness, um, we don't actually have an entitlement. We can, we can just see how many days we've taken off um, in that period of time. We can then select the date when it's to and from. We can select full days or half days and put in some details in here. And also we have this option here to book on behalf of another user, which actually is only available to certain people, again, based on a SharePoint list, which says who has available to this feature. So this would be great for something like a um, an office manager, so when people are calling in sick and then and then an office manager needs to book on behalf of somebody or a PA booking holiday on, on behalf of somebody. Um, that's what that kind of option is for. Once it's submitted, though, it will then go through to the line manager um, of the employee that submitted it for approval. And essentially, that could either, again, it could be something that is from a SharePoint list, or you could look up the line manager field inside of Active Directory. Then what would happen is, say, for example, if it was a holiday and it was marked as approved, it would then deduct the balance and then give the new balance. We can also see, as a user, 
we can see our own leave balance uh, totals in here. So we can see who our approver is. We can see current holidays, how much we've taken, how much we've got left, things like that. I can see my previous requests inside of here. I could also use this request time off in lieu or or sometimes referred to as toil. So say, for example, if I was to work on a weekend or uh, out of hours, I could submit that and that also would have its own balance that I could pull from afterwards as well. In the managers area, I can see anybody that reports to me and actually drill down into their bookings uh, and see how much holiday they've got left. And also I can see general company holidays as well that we adhere to. So Christmas sort of periods and things like that, which are on top of the existing entitlements. So this is all built, as I say, using Canvas Power Apps. It's nice and easy to use. Um, I just want to give you this as a bit of an example of what it kind of looks like. So now let's move and talk a bit about model-driven power apps. Now, model-driven power apps essentially originated from Dynamics 365. So it all looks and feels very much like Dynamics 365. So if you've ever used that before, or general kind of Dynamics CRM type packages, you'll be quite familiar with the look and feel of what's possible with model-driven apps. The whole purpose of model-driven apps is to essentially integrate with business data with, through mobile-friendly apps. Um, it's it's so allowing you to build out applications really quickly and easily. Model-driven apps start with your data model. So whereas with a Canvas app, you're kind of thinking about what the front end looks like. Um, with model-driven apps, you're really hyper-focusing on what the back end looks like. And you're focusing on the tables, the relationships with the data. And essentially, the, when you're building a model-driven app, 90% of the model-driven app, you're building in the background first with your tables and relationships. And then right at the last minute, it all comes together um, from those dataverse tables to build out the forms, the views, and other key kind of components that you need to build out the app. Um, more driven apps quickly generates the, the user interface um, that, again, is natively responsive. But the big but is that more driven apps, you, you, it will only ever kind of look like this, this functionality. Um, essentially, it's a set of kind of widgets you can put onto the page. Um, and, and it always looks very, very similar. Um, there's pros and cons to that. What you tend to find with more driven apps is you get less kind of user interface bugs to a certain extent because if you imagine with canvas power apps you're literally building everything from the beginning and what i mean by that is like with a model driven app um you essentially can see um it, it builds out like a, a table a list it builds out the kind of forms natively for you and all the kind of buttons which navigate you and move you around between those different things they are all essentially built ready for you ready to go um so let's jump in and take a look so here's a really simplistic, basic example. Um, obviously, you can go a little bit more advanced with these types of things, but I just wanted to quickly show you a sort of example of what a model-driven app looks like. Typically, you would always have access to the tables um, for the model-driven app on the left-hand side. So in this case, this is a mock-up proof of concept incident app. So if there was an incident in the workplace, rather than logging that into a paper logbook, essentially um, this is allowing us an area that we can go and put this in digitally. And this literally, I mean, it spun up really quickly. Um, it was much quicker to put together than if we were to build it as a Canvas app. So we create our instance table, which just has columns like full name, the date of the incident, the body parts, um, when it's created, things like that. And we can see this is a record in that table, which we can open up by double clicking, or we can click on new to create a brand new record. This then takes us to a basic form. So we can put in details into here. So we can put in someone's name, the full name, the date of the incident, the body part that was injured, things like that. And we can kind of add new fields into here. We can do things like what they call business rules, which is where you can make certain fields required dependent on other fields, or we can show and hide fields depending on other fields, which is really useful as part of that data capture piece. Because essentially, model-driven apps, they're usually used by kind of, um, let's say, for example, like a IT support desk or customer service desk where people are ringing in and the, the, the customer reps are taking kind of... Um, uh, records and, and and they're kind of making a, a, log of, a log of an incident or an issue or something like that and depending on what that issue is you might want to capture different data so say for example if someone rings up and says oh my my laptop is broken when they change that one of the fields to say oh this is a hardware issue then maybe certain fields will then come up and say well how long has it been going on is anyone else affected by it um blah 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 
so those different fields so that might be a totally different than if if there's an incident that was related to um say like a, a, a something else was broken a, a sink was broken in the kitchen or something like that that those are two different incidents which required totally different data to capture to understand them and that's where you can kind of control that also what you can add with model driven apps is what we call business process flows which essentially you might have seen this where there's kind of like almost like gateways that you can add across the top so i haven't got one in this uh, example but say for example you could have step one step two step three so it might be step one is kind of like uh, initial capture of incident information step two is the investigation stage step three is summary and resolution stage and then step four is completed and closed stage and then you can move it between the different stages again at different stages you could have different fields which are required to make sure they're captured as you move through those different stages um so essentially, that is what a model-driven app is. They all look very, very similar in compared to Canvas apps, which you can completely customize. Also, model-driven apps, the licensing is slightly different in the sense that you do need a perhaps premium license for a model-driven app. Whereas with Canvas apps, Canvas apps are included as part of most of the Microsoft 365 licenses that people have. So that's another reason why you tend to find a lot more people are using Canvas apps and model-driven apps. Um, one of the other pros of model-driven apps, as I say, is it's much quicker, um, more reliable to build than Canvas apps. So if you wanted to get some apps off the ground quicker, then model-driven apps is probably going to be your preferred option. Now, I did promise there's a third type of power app that I'm going to tell you about. But first, I just want to ask a favor. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe to our channel and also turn on the bell notification for notifications related to new videos that we're posting. We're trying to post videos every week and we also include deep dive webinars as well on a monthly basis. If you need any help at all with Power Apps, you can contact us by going to valto.co.uk forward slash YouTube. There's also a comment, a pinned comment and a link in the description of this video. Now, although not including the title of this video, I have to tell you about Power Apps Pages. This was formerly known as Power Apps Portals. It would feel a disservice to be talking about two out of three Power Apps without telling you about the third. So Power Apps Pages, anonymously, uh, previously called formerly, <laughs> previously it was called Portals. So it was Parrot's Portals, and now it's called Parrot's Pages. It's getting a bit of a mouthful here. It allows you to build anonymous portals, which are essentially websites, which can be surfaced from search engines like Google. They're for things like customers or suppliers or contractors, and it allows you to build out these third-party kind of interaction areas which are externally accessible for your customers, contractors, suppliers to interact with your business data. So that might be, for example, dropping off information or collecting information. It can provide things like a, almost like a, a login for, say, for example, for Valto. Um, we have areas that our customers can submit IT support tickets through. It could be something that you're providing packs information to your customers that can go and collect. It might be we've done a lot of work where it's things like um, where information needs to be collected from a customer and you need them to go through a guided process to say, okay, there's 10 steps here and each one along the way, we need to collect information from you to be able to process um, the information that you're giving us. Um, it's worth noting though that Power Apps portals are licensed per portal rather than per individual. Um, now, the price does slightly vary but it is typically more cost effective to have a Parrots portal if you're going to have a very large um, set of users, external users. So rather than licensing external users for say Canvas apps or model driven apps, it can work out much more cost effective to license a portal. All the data lives inside of Dataverse. So just like with model driven apps, that all the data is stored in Dataverse. And in fact, actually, there's no other option for model driven apps or for Power Apps pages to store their data other than in Dataverse. So um, you do need, a, say, a premium license to access that data. 
Now, it doesn't necessarily mean every user needs access to uh, a license to access that data, but typically you might build a model driven apps for the admins of this system or people who are going to be using that data, collecting it and processing it afterwards. They would need to have the Parrot's premium license. So I hope that was useful. If you have any questions at all, then um, plop them in the comments below. If you want some support or help building out a power app, you can contact us at valto.co.uk forward slash YouTube. Thank you very much for watching this video.